Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemuff, and over there is John. Very tired out, Lewandowski. <laughs> yeah, didn't sleep well last night. Didn't sleep well last night. Not going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> right, I was about to say that. Probably not tonight either with everything. Not with everything that's going on today in this organization. Right. <sighs> All righty, so let's get into the one the one thing that, that we can control here. And that is the game. The game the Preds took on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, we have a lot for you in this show, so bear with us if there's a part two. Just letting you know. We will carry on and do a part two if need be. So bear with us. Um, so first off, the Preds took out the Coyotes with Connor Agram in net. Uh, Connor Agram, former Nashville Predator. Every, uh, Preds fans love him. Yeah, no, that kind of thing. But from that beyond, I turn it over to John. All right. So like you said, the Nashville Predators took on the Arizona Coyotes. I almost said Phoenix. They're always going to be Phoenix to me. Anyways, shots on Arizona, Arizona college team runners. <laughs> Anyways, shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshot Arizona 12 to 10. In the second period, Arizona outshot Nashville 9 to 8. In the third period, Nashville outshot Arizona 14 to 8. And in total, Nashville outshot Arizona 34 to 27. Now in the face-off circle, the Predators are better at 52% to the Coyotes 48%. On the power play, the Predators went two for three while the Coyotes went 0 for 5. <clears throat> in penalty minutes, the Predators had 10, the Coyotes 16. Hits the Coyotes had 26, the Predators 21. Blocks, the Predators had 16, the Coyotes 13. Giveaways, the Coyotes had 13, the Predators had 6. All right. All right. So scoring in the first was Shane Gostisbehere with his 10th of the season with an assist from Schmaltz, his 22nd. Then Yakov Trenet scores his ninth with an assist from who again? Tomasito. Tomasito's on a tear. Uh-oh. Um, then Colton Sissons also with his 13th. Then Matt Duchesne scores his 18th with an assist from Cody Glass, his 15th. And Alexander Carrier, welcome back, buddy, eh? His 7th. Mm -hmm. Then the second period, Roman Yossi scores his 16th in the year, assisted by Novak, his 12th, and Trennan, his 9th. Then Nick Schmoltz scores his 17th of the year, assisted by Keller, his 32nd, and Hayton, his 15th. Tommy Novak then scores his ninth of the year in the third with with an assist from Granlin, his 26th, and Duchesne, his 30th. Then Roman Yossi scores on the power play, his 17th, with an assist from who else but Tommy Novak, his 13th, with an assist from also Duchesne, his 31st. That was scored on the power play. Then Cody Glass scores his eighth with an assist from Granlin, his 27th, and Yossi, his 37th, with that being the final score, UC Saros was in net, stopping 25 of 27. Connor Ingram, as I said, was in net. His, he stopped 28 of 34 with a 0.824 save percentage. Net, Nashville's UC Saros stopped, like I said, 25 of 27 with a 0.926 save percentage. So Saros still doing some work here. Uh, scratches for Nashville with Philip Forsberg, Yusuf Parson, and Ryan Johansson all injured. Um, to the extent of Parsonage's injury, I know it's day to day. That's all I know. Uh, Forsberg day to day. Johansson is out probably the rest of the season. Um, Arizona's scratches are Josh Brown and Jacob Chikrin again. Chikrin most likely to not be moved. I hope he gets moved because I'm sick of hearing it every year. But you get what I'm saying. All right. Now let's get into the Circus Fest. And by Circus Fest, I mean the insanity and sh sh things that happened today. All right. So first off, David Poyle will retire as general manager of hockey operations on June 30th, the day after the NHL draft. Thought I'd put that out there, the day after the NHL draft. David Poyle said, this is the best decision for me personally and 
best for Nashville, the Nashville Predators. For the Nashville Predators, I believe it's time for a new voice and a new direction. I'm proud of the foundation we have put in place in our hockey operations, investing and improving in every area of the department. This is the right time for someone else to move our franchise forward. I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, Poil remain as an av advisor role, serving as team ownership as its operations leadership group, at the hockey operations department. Basically meaning that he bought part of the team with the money he has. So he's going to have some say. All righty. Uh, the longest tenured NHL G longest GM tenured NHL and NHL history. David Poyle is 41 years consecutive in the NHL, 26 with the Predators, who hired him as their first general manager, July 9th of 1997. Before and prior to that, David Poyle spent 15 years with the Washington Capitals, 1982 to 1970, 1997. He is extremely proud of everything and our appearance in the Cup and the President's Trophy, but the most proud is helping develop Smashville into one of the best hockey markets in all of the NHL. We're, I'm fiercely proud of the accomplishments and will remain committed in my new role to helping achieve our ultimate goal of winning a Stanley Cup. David Paul becomes the first GM to, in league history to reach 3,000 games, regular season games when the Predators hosted the Philadelphia Flyers, October 22nd of 2022. The 73-year-old became a GM first, the first GM to reach 1,500 wins in the defeat of the Arizona Coyotes on November 22nd this year. Poyle surpasses Glenn Sauter as the winningest GM in, in AHL history when he won his 1,320th game on March 1st, 2018 against the Edmonton Oilers. He is the only general manager in the league history to lead two different teams for more than a thousand games and more than five hundred victories. David Poyle's footsteps followed after in the footsteps of his father, Bud Poyle, who was the first GM of an expansion team known as the Philadelphia Flyers, who built the Broad City Bruisers. David Poyle joined the Atlanta Flames under the under Cliff Fletcher in 1972. He then graduated from Northeastern, where he played three seasons as a forward, letting him to be named the Flames' assistant GM five years later, before earning his first GM job with the Washington Capitals ten years later. He received the Lester Patrick Award for his outstanding services to hockey in the United States in 2001. He received General Manager of the Year as after the Predators events the Stanley Cup for the first time in NHL history and was inducted into the United States Hockey Hall of Fame in 2018. These are just some of his accomplishments with the Nashville Predators and Washington Capitals. Paul the Heider, let's not forget who the successor is here, Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz, the first coach of the Nashville Predators. Um had a hand in building Nashville to what it is. Um, where that stops is this. Um, for the next three years, I kind of don't want to see a fire anybody sign. You're not going to have a bad team and then win the cup the next year. It just doesn't happen. Right. So unless Connor Bedard comes in and we get picked number one and Bedard comes in right. and terrorizes the whole league to, the, to a Stanley Cup. That's the only way. Likelihood of that, one in a million. But there is a chance. So I could always say that too. But as far as that goes, uh, just I'm going to say this quick. David Poyle means a lot to this. Well, these yeah. two both. He means a lot to this. And thank you for all the memories. The cup run was amazing. I, I can't express how happy me and John were to see our team in the cup. It's much like if I saw Buffalo or he saw Colorado, we're, 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 and by the way, yes, I'm still going to cheer for Tanner Janot. 
speaking of which, let's get into that a little bit before I ask John. Um, we may do a part two just on the basis of John and me doing a little bit of banter back and forth about our feelings of everything because we've got more. There's more. I feel like Billy Mays or Willie Mays or whatever his name is that used to do the commercials for the the late night TV show. But wait, yeah. there's more. <laughs> But wait, there is more. Tanner Janot, like I said, I'm thankful for Tanner Janot because Tanner Janot was traded today for Cal Foot. Now, <laughs> John is ecstatic about this. <laughs> I am not. I kid, I kid, I kid. Um, you know, to be real truthful, and I'm going to be real truthful here. Um. You pretty much traded an undrafted player for two first round picks because Cal Foot was a first round pick in 2017. Um let's see. What else did the Preds get out of this? All right. So they got a third, a fourth, a fifth this year, a second next year, and a first the year after that's top ten protected. Um, I think Tampa got fleeced, but that's my opinion. Because if they draft one Tanner Janot, one stud player, and Cal Foot becomes a stud player, they win. It's that simple. Yeah. Now, that guy Future Considerations also got traded. We The Admirals are getting Isaac Ratcliffe. All right. Uh, thank you for all the memories, future considerations. You were a great player for us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But all seriousness, um, before I get into the Isaac Ratcliffe thing, thank you, Tanner, for all the rem memories as an Admiral fan. Thank you for bloodying Dominic Shine. I'm not supposed to say that out loud, but here's a moment where I can say it. You're no longer with the organization. I can say it. Thank you for bloodying Dominic Shine. That was a hell of a tilt. It's a memory I'll never forget. Much like Troy Grosnick's goalie fight versus Rockford. It's a memory I'll never forget. So when I'm saying this, um, Cubs Calfoot with be able to create new memories, and Isaac Ratcliffe, who is a second round pick in 2027. He's only 24 years old. He's six foot six with 225 pound build frame. All righty. Want to get into some of the stats this year. He has played 26 games for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. He has two goals, two assists, four points, and a minus three. He has 10 games NHL experience with one goal, four assists, and a minus one. Uh, Cal Foot has, well, this is going to take a little bit, but 117 games played in the NHL with four goals, 11 assists, 15 points, and a plus 18. Um, he has bounced back and forth between Tampa at the crunch the last few years, unknown where he will land at the current moment. So with that all being said, the Preds' new thing, um, First off, John, your opinion on the Poil and Trotz thing? Um, I I felt for a while it's been time for some kind of change. Didn't know what that would look like. Now we're starting to get a better picture of that. Um, the Heinz thing. Uh, like you said, I don't want to hear it for three years. I wouldn't want to hear it till at least his contract is up on what they do whether they move on from him or not I want to wait till the end of the season to be truthful and then go from there because I have a feeling he's done after this season anyway but because Trotz is going to want to pick his own staff right that's entirely possible yeah much like he picked Todd Richards to be the co the assistant coach in Milwaukee who happens to be on the Preds coaching staff. And wouldn't it be interesting to see him put him at an interim position for a couple of years till they feel Taylor's ready? Yeah. 
and just say, hey, Taylor, whenever you say, hey, I think I'm ready to work with the guys that I've worked with. Because I think that's going to be the thing. I think that I want them to be able to, him to groom the players. Once the players are groomed, then he grooms them at the next level. Right. And he keeps grooming them. And then he gets groomed by Barry Trotz. Right. And I think that's the way we should go about this. Yeah. Uh, I'm no, I'm not the front office. I don't make the calls. It's just a thought. Now, as far as 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 Coyle, I do thank him for all the memories. The last few yeah. years haven't been very good. What? Um. Now, he's the only GM I've known my entire time of being a fran- fan of the Nashville Predators. As many as well as many other Preds fans can say. And to not say, for all the people who are saying, don't let the door hit you, well, guess what? That door, it ain't closed. You don't think that, that, that if he fails, they can't put him back in power? Go, hey, can you interrupt until we find what we're really looking for? But you don't think they won't do it? They'll do it. If it saves them a buck. Gotta remember, this is still business. Now, what is your thoughts? Now, I know our thoughts on this Tanner Janot is not going to be complete until 2025. Right. To see what we get to pick. Right. But, from the looks of it, just on paper, it looks like Tampa got fleeced. Again. Yeah, it looks like a haul for Nashville. I mean, Nashville got a haul for Tanner Janot. And if you're getting a haul for Tanner Janot, maybe you'll get a haul for a guy like Dante Favreau. Maybe you'll get a haul for a guy like, you know, Cody Glass. Maybe you'll get a haul for a Mikel Gradlin. Maybe you'll get a haul for a Matt Duchesne. If you can right. get hauls, and, and yes, you are in a position now where you can retain cap. Right. But that's the question. Now, as far as it goes, what's your thought on the return? Do you think Cal Foot makes an impact? I do. I don't think he's ready for the full-time impact, but I think he, he can make an impact. Yeah, there's definitely still some room in his game for improvement. Yeah, and, and and as far as Isaac Radcliffe and the future considerations, um, future considerations could be money. Right. So it's it's very simple. What is your thought? It could be nothing. They just wanted him off the roster. Right. Um, what is your thoughts on Nashville picking up yet another big six foot something center or winger? Uh, I like it. I like that direction that they moved in. Uh, we it seems that we have a big team down here in Milwaukee, and they seem to want to go that way in Nashville. Uh, it's appeared over the past few years to get bigger. And younger. Yes. And here's the thing I don't think a lot of people have thought about. Jokub Kabel, Zachary LaRue, Fedor Shvetchkov, just to name a uh, three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Nashville has three first round picks who have never stepped foot in America yet or right. haven't played at our level yet. Do you think that in the coming years, when those guys are ready to go and all these picks are coming in, I, I, this is amazing for both, right? I mean, because here's the thing um, Nashville, the road does go through Milwaukee. Um, Trotz alliterated that too. Uh, Trotz will, Trotz will buy into that as well. Uh, Trotz knows exactly what it means to be, and see, that's where the, the advisor role comes in handy with Poyle. Right. And the ownership, because the ownership's the big key to, uh, the admirals right now. 
And I think that that's, that's like the big part for the admirals. Obviously, with with all this going on, we want to make sure that, that things go properly. And right. obviously, for our side of things, yes, this is juicy news. But, I mean, I, I hope we're done for the night. But with this, you never know. Um, I, I assume... Uh-oh. I'm I'm not going to talk about that for a second, but um there's a coach in Quebec that Nashville is eyeing. He's also the GM and owner. And who would he love to stick it to more than a divisional opponent? I don't know. There are some free agent coaches out there that I wouldn't mind seeing. One is a former Colorado goalie. Yeah. <laughs> John would buy a Patrick Waugh Preds jersey just to be funny. <laughs> he yeah. would. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be dancing in the fucking streets. And yes, I swore, but that's that's literally I don't care. It's that's we gotta have fun. We have this this thing is stressful. Understand you, you I don't know how much you guys you fans, I, I know it's hard to cheer for a losing team. Um but imagine covering it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having to not swear on a show because certain people are offended by words. I'm I'm not gonna say any names. Um, or I I don't know names. I I'm just saying I've been recommended. But I mean, this is the part where we're talking about. This is where it's fun, and I I mean that slipped out obviously, and I caught it, and I'm addressing it. Right away. I noticed. I screwed up. I'm addressing it. So, um, you know, understand I'm not using it in an angrily tone. I'm, I'm, I'm using it more as a comical filter word. Right. So um, I, I just hope you guys can understand. I'm not trying to, like, be overly here. Um, do you think with all this going on, this week's gonna get any crazier. Yeah, I do. How much sleep do you think we're gonna get? <laughs> How much less sleep are we gonna get? Is the question. Yeah, that's the real kicker because that last night's a little tough. Um, but just saying, you know, um, do you? With everything going on and all those teams moving pieces around and buyers are buying and selling, buying and it's strange. Um, what do you think, like, if Ottawa came calling again for, like, Duchesne or something? You know, those things could happen. Red Wings could call for him. Buffalo could call for him. You may not get the haul and picks you're wanting, but you could definitely fleece them on prospects. Right. Buffalo may not be willing to give up picks, but you could get a ton of prospects. Yeah. And Buffalo's got a ton of good ones. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot that could go into this. Buffalo's trying to contend for the playoffs. They need they need somebody in there with playoff experience. The yeah. other part, I can see Buffalo calling on Saros, too. Right. Not wanting both. Then you're going to have to give up first. But at that point, you're buying everything. Right. 
I see it as about three to five years till this team is cup contenders. Hopefully sooner, but it seems we're going to go with a full rebuild at this point. But at the same time, what they're getting isn't exactly a step down either. No, it's not. And it's not like they're selling what they can't replace. Right. You know, um, I just question now the Matthew Olivier move now. Right. I didn't like that move myself. But, I mean, I'm I'm not a fan of that move, but it is what it is. I, I, I could see that Nashville's obviously moving in a specific direction. Um, upcoming for us, we have a game tomorrow, uh, game on Tuesday and a game on Wednesday, a game on Thursday. I think we're, we have a game Friday, Saturday, and we're off Sunday. So we, we have lots of videos in that time of games. So I'm I'm gonna warn you, there may be a lot of videos like this one, where we're we're trying to cram a lot, and the game seems like a a lesser thought. But we're talking about the future here, right? You know, the future of this organization. David Poyle is an intricate part of the Nashville Predators. David Poyle is the Nashville Predators, to my personal belief. Without any of him, there is any player, any person who's loved a player or ever bought a jersey because they loved a player, thank David Poyle, because he's right. the one who brought him there. He's the one that signs the paychecks. When 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 I sit there and say that one, that that that's a fact. You could blame him for Heinz and Heinz screwing up what could have been a dynasty, yes. But everyone makes mistakes, some bigger than others. I remember that this is the same guy that traded Martin Erat, Michael Latta, and a third round pick for Philip Forsberg. Right. None of them, none of that came up to anything for Washington. I would laugh if he traded it back to Washington. <laughs> but that's just what I'm saying for now. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Thank you for watching. Daniel Goodwell, John Lewandowski.